Welcome back to the Honduki project, and we're going to be fitting the exhaust for real this time, hopefully. As well as hopefully checking some other bits and pieces off that list. So, stay tuned. Our Delkovic exhaust has been uh, modified by Adam, hopefully, and uh, it all should fit nicely. In fact, it's an exhausting kind of day because these arrive for the Kawasaki, which is good because they do fit. Anyway, that's another series. Yes, another project. Uh, so if you're not watching that one, uh, do uh, do check out the channel and um, check that particular project out. It's very similar to the Honda, actually. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks for tuning in again. If you haven't already, subscribe. And if at any point during a video you think it's worth a thumbs up, then uh, do that too. Much better. Lovely. Uh, so we just need to uh, fit them all on, first of all, kind of loose, like this one is. So we can get them all joined up at the bottom, then make sure they're all marrying up at the top, in there specifically. And then we can tighten them all down. Sweet. And there we have it, roughly in place. Yeah. Okay, so there's still a certain amount of jiggling to be done. I'm not sure that's a bloody long stretch for a spring. Especially given the sizes of the springs that I've got. So these are only in uh, probably not even 10 mil. So I guess I've got to wiggle that further along. That'll be fun. And at that point, I think I'm going to tighten these up a little bit more so that they're kind of more in place before wiggling that. They're all snugged up now to the crush gaskets without actually kind of crushing them. So now we need to sort out the other end. Like I said, there's a long way to go, I guess. A lot of help from the usual suspects and we have one spring on just that top one never gonna happen because these are all the same length I think anyway one's good let's see if we can do one the other side I'm out of breath this side was altogether easier. Uh, top one just sailed on, bottom one a little bit more of a stretch, as you can see. So we've got three out of four on. That's a good start, right? And honestly, I think it's a good finish because that's never going to happen. Oh, I might have a longer one that reached that, but apparently not in the appropriately labelled box. I think there's some in here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes, here they are. Okay, let's try some of these. No, they didn't work either. That's all right, it's good enough for me. It's the old 80-20 rule, or near enough. Uh, 75, 25 to be precise. Either way, that ain't coming off. So, uh, I've got to tighten those up, obviously. And of course, we need to work out whether we're gonna put that actual finished rear end pipe on it or not. Yes, this one. Uh, let's have a look at that then. Oh, I don't know. Yes, the actual silencer or muffler. Well, I mean, it fits on there nice enough. It's a question of how and where to mount it. It's getting dangerously clear. The mounting on it is kind of totally irrelevant. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mount to. And our brake line is in the way, which if this system is specifically designed for the year which it's supposed to be i don't know what they're thinking anyway uh we have this bracket which is obviously supposed to go something like that so i suppose you're supposed to mount it on there uh, or not maybe you just let it wiggle around I mean you know, that it won't wiggle around like that because obviously you're gonna strap it on there 
so bounce around a bit. Don't like that. I prefer the idea of trying to mount it here somewhere, honestly. Or not at all, you know me. We don't need those stinking silences. Loud pipes save lives. So at this point, I shall just ponder it and we'll fire it up without it and see what it sounds like. I'm sure it won't be as loud as the Ducati. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, ish. Uh, what next? Uh, yeah, throw boring stuff. Throw a cable, bleeding the brake still. Got to mount the choke somewhere. Uh, tighten the rear wheel. I've added that, yeah, and just remembered. Be a good idea before we test ride it. And uh, yes, the left side panel. Hmm. Yeah, completely forgotten about that. Well, we have got version 2.0, which we can always fit, even if we don't like the look of it right now. So that's not a deal breaker. Throttle grip, back on. And throttle cable, connected. Uh, loose at the moment, because I'm still not sure about the routing of that. Don't want too many violent kinks. Don't want involuntary cruise control like I ended up with on the Triumph because the cable kind of was sticky. So it's rooted fairly randomly behind the light. Um, try and take up some of the slack because obviously this is one of the issues that you come up with and I've yet to kind of explore custom throttle cables. But clearly, you know, this would be out here somewhere, right? On normal handlebars. Up here, miles from where it actually is. So it's a little bit long in the tooth. I know the feeling. So yeah, still some adjustment to be done there, but that will give us some um, tweakability. to enable to start it up. That um, that does that, by the way. Yeah, it's all working. Still fully functional. Uh, and I know that feeling as well. Well, at least physically. I'm not sure about mentally. So next up, uh, bleed brakes. We would sort that out later. Uh, mount choke, yes, while we're on cables. Uh, I'm still favoring mounting it off here like we did that. Yeah. So another one of those magical rubber doofers into the handlebar itself. Little, uh, little right angle bracket, mount it there. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, that'll do. Anyway, for the time being, don't need to worry about that. In fact, we don't need to worry about any of that to try and start it up, right? Should we try and start it up? We'll have to put some fuel in it, obviously. And, um, I think our pipeline is all secure. Let's try that. Well, as it happens, I found somewhere more convenient, uh, at least temporarily. Uh, yes, there was already an existing hole, the perfect size. So uh, the choke is going to live there, at least for the moment. And uh, while we're on the subject of cables, what I forgot to do when I put the exhaust in was think about where that clutch cable was going to go. And at the moment I'd rooted it kind of over towards the right early on, uh, later on. And I think I want to bring it up this fork here in the frame, because right now that's up against the pipe, and that's no good, is it? It's just going to melt. Yeah, that's a bugger. Uh, so I've got to disconnect one end or t'other, and reroute that. I seem to remember this was a bit of a fiddle, but... Ah, well. Yes, indeed, it was. It was um, a real bugger to get that all kind of short enough. If you remember, we had to modify this a little. Anyway, it's now rerouted, so it goes down the inside of the frame, away from the exhaust. All right, that's that done. Um, yes, seat. Well, um, I've ticked it. I mean, we know we can mount it. It's just sat on there at the moment. 
I should probably tighten the rear wheel though. I wonder what torque setting that's supposed to be. Let's have a look, shall we? Yeah, well, that was a lot easier. Uh, so, mm, yeah, 60 ish. Probably be good enough. I think that's two elbow cranks. Okay, uh, so I've tightened it up and uh, that's what we're waiting for that reassuring little click. Okay, so that's good, and this is what's known as a good old fashioned castle nut. So we're going to need a split pin or a cutter pin which goes through the hole. Uh, I don't know if you can even see it, uh, but there's a hole in the middle of the, uh, the axle itself, the bolt, if you like. Top tack tink tip. Always remember to store it at, uh, with the pressure off, basically. Mm. Yes, well, that's the only suitable cotter pin that I've got, which is probably one that came off it. And I don't know if I really want to use that again. Yeah, it seems we're lacking cotter pins. Probably should get a variety. Well, it wasn't on the list, but I've um, I've put together our GPS speedo. Yes, our 22 bucks special, whatever it was. Anyway, we'll see if that works for real. It did in the FJ, so no reason it shouldn't. Uh, yes, uh, mm, I guess we need to put some gasoline in. That's lucky. Seems we have some. But I think I'll have a cigarette first. Only wise. Suffice to say, I couldn't work out that ridiculous safety device. Didn't matter which way I pulled it, pushed it, whatever, and nothing came out. So we're going to use a funnel. Glad I'm not in the middle of the desert somewhere, uh, ran out of fuel, and relying on this to fill my tank up, because I would get very annoyed and frustrated very quickly, and that wouldn't help. There, that worked. So. We have fuel. And on that note, I would uh, not end the video. Uh, I would ask you uh, if you like the video at all, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. And of course, encourage others to watch my lunacy because we're just about to fire this baby up, hopefully. Yes, indeed. Um, first other safety check is to uh, do a head count on the cats because before we open the door to let out the exhaust fumes, we need to make sure there are no little furry felines in the garage because they'll run outside and get eaten by something nasty. And if it's anything like the Suzuki, it's going to need a little coaxing into life. Um, the Suzuki particularly was like no throttle, full choke for a bit, so we're going to need that little chokey boy. And we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. That's exciting, isn't it? Okay, so we have fuel in the tank. And uh, now I guess we better find out whether this works. So let's try that and see if we see anything flowing through. Hmm, no. Not a lot. That's not going to help, is it? Perhaps we should open the throttle. Can't do that and hold the camera. Well, part one of the problem was that the uh, gravity fed uh, actually kind of went uphill at some point, so it wasn't getting any fuel. Um, kind of semi rectified that we're obviously going to have to adjust that so that this this pipe comes downhill the whole way um, but we did I just got I've been cranking it and I just got a little there it's trying Now we're running out of battery, of course. So a few little pops and farts, encouraging as they were, and now we've got a dead battery. So uh, let's let that charge up overnight, and uh, we'll resume in the morning. I'm gonna leave the fuel on, so that hopefully more will get down there. But yeah, you can see the problem. Yeah, that went up in a loop, and it needs to kind of go downhill the whole way. So we need to chop that and reconnect it. As always, with a night to sleep on it and come up with possible solutions, I 
remember these that I had from, actually they're off the race car, they're off the splitter. They go over the rods to make it look pretty. Anyway, we've used them for lots of things before and I was rather hoping that they might fit this tube. Well, they kind of do, but on the outside. So, I still have a cunning plan. Mm, because we need to run this downhill on a consistent basis and that means it's going to get pretty close to the cylinder heads which I mean it'll probably be alright but putting it in a little metal sheath is a good idea then we just need to cut it to the right length so that it falls out the end there and carries on downhill to where it joins the carburetors so I think we're going to do that before we try and start it again actually I've got to take the tank off anyway because I found that our speedo is not working because the earth wires completely disappeared. I don't remember that happening, but I just happened to have one here, which might well have been it. So let's get on with that then. Well, that's that sorted anyway. Good. Well, I couldn't pull the damn pipe off, so I had to cut it, which is okay because we need to cut it shorter anyway. Uh, so that's good from the point of view of that's not going to fall off. So I've removed both ends of the pipe because I figure it'd be easier to get this end on once we've got it shortened because we're not going to have a load of slack to play with like we did last time. And uh, yeah, chances of getting down there and getting it on there are going to be minimal. So uh, yes, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and yes, that's blood, not paint. Blood, sweat and tears, people. I'll clean that up later. Okay, we're on at the back, which was a total nightmare, so I'm glad I did it this way around. And uh, we've got a little clippy thing ready to go. So, I reckon we need to shave off another 5mm, maybe. Okay, I think we are good to clamp. We have a definite downhill motion the whole time, and it gets steeper there, so that's good. Okay, we're clamped. Of course, if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to rethink this whole solution to the tank issue. And I don't know what that might be at this point. Anyway, I opened up the tap and there seemed to be a good instant flow, so let's hope that's a problem solved. Right, let's give it another go. Uh, choke is on. Gave it a couple of squirts on there. Speedo's on. Cool. Uh, let's, let's see what happens. I was definitely trying harder. I'm trying to choke off. Well, I got really hopeful a couple of times, I have to say. Um, multiple pops rather than just a pop, 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 pop. Uh, but no. And every time I open the throttle, it just completely dies. Well, I've taken the opportunity to tidy up some of the uh, cabling and electrics, so that's a lot neat and tidier in there. Uh, I need some slightly bigger stuff for this. It's bulging at the seams. choke on but I obviously didn't this is how far you have to pull it out to get it to choke and we're getting a little bit more success yes I think it's flooded now that's the trouble encouraging I shall let it rest a while and on that note, I think we'll call it a day. So as usual, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'm sure we'll get it started next time around. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. So you 
might fire it out next time, you never know. And um, yeah, of course, encourage others to watch my lunacy. <laughs>